<laughs> hey everybody, it's Monday and it's glass night. I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And we're late. And it's my fault again. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I, I don't know what went wrong, but uh, we're here. Sorry about that. RDRV, thank you for showing up. Hey guys, up. I'm glad to see everybody here. Jennifer, Sear, everybody. Wow. Texas Tom, hey guys. Nice to see everybody tonight. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Sorry about that, guys. Um, we hope you're having a, a great week so far, and uh, you're making a lot of new glass discoveries, and you've brought a lot of questions for us tonight, I hope. Yeah, I see a lot of people are here tonight. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So, uh, Rochelle is here, A.K. Martin Entz is here, Cat St. Jane, Joyce, Kevin, Rick Day, Julie Graves, Ed Foreman, C.M., Texas Tom, Brandon, Chess Ray. Jennifer Enlow, Jennifer, I got your email, but I didn't get a chance to copy it, to share it, but we'll talk about that tonight. Bobby, um, Magali's here, Melissa's here, Rick Day, Anita, welcome everyone. Yeah, welcome to the RDRV Glass Studio channel tonight, a live Q&A. Miss Mary's laying under the table on her shelf, she's all, she's our top shelf dog, and she's on the top shelf tonight. So uh, we want to say thank you to Sunshine Glassworks for being our sponsor yeah. tonight and yeah. talk to Sean today. Yeah, I talked to Sean today and uh, they've, uh, you know, the, the, a lot of the Wismac glass that uh, they just got in also uh, is available and they keep, they have 1,500 different colors of glass, but they also stock all of your hand tools and things like that. So if Sunshine can give you a hand uh, up, to help you start and work on your projects. They carry lead and foil, all those different things. Give them a holler. Let them know that you heard it right here on the RDRV Glass Studio channel. Thank you, Sunshine. We appreciate it. Yes, thank you, Sunshine. And thank you, Ray. Ray's here tonight. Hey, Ray. If you have anything we can't answer right away, Ray usually finds a link or answers a question or helps us out in some way. So he's our moderator. And thank you, Ray. We appreciate you. We do. Miss Mary's kind of walking Mary's around, walking enjoying around herself. Mary's walking around a little bit tonight. So, um, if you have a question, just put it in the chat. Um, if you uh, 
Want to say hello to Mary? She's right here. <laughs> She's ready to bark. Mary, you're going to have to be quiet. She's all right. She's all right. So yeah, Joyce is saying she just got back from a run, a run to Kokomo for an emergency door repair. So way oh. to go to be that close. Yeah, Good for you, girl. You are lucky. <laughs> yeah. So Jennifer sent me a note and said that Wismac is having a big sale in June. I didn't get a chance to run a copy. Um, yeah. So check that out. And you know what? Uh, Wismac is in Payton City, West Virginia, and. You know, if you can just go for a day or whatever. This sale is to help them fabricate and, and build their new warehouse, a new warehouse for them. So, y'all, if you can pile into West Virginia, let them know that the stained glass people are there and purchase all the glass you can. Let's get that new warehouse built for Wismac. Yeah, yeah. So, we'll give you those dates. Um, we'll get them up and, and put them on the community page. Yeah, we'll put them on the community page for you so everybody can see them. So that's a good deal. If you're nearby, yeah, definitely run up and get them. Yeah, and of course, this time of year, you know, um, even if it's it's hot in the south and in the east coast, get into the mountains of West Virginia and you're going to be at least comfortable. <laughs> A.K. Martinez, uh, that does not ring a bell. Um, can you send that to me again? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Attaching stained glass to hog wire fence. I'm not sure what. No, I would have remembered that. I did not see that. Do you remember that one? I don't remember it. No, I do not. And y'all, I might have a little bit of trouble talking. I've been sick all weekend. Barbara had a sinus thing this past weekend, y'all, that just drove her crazy. And uh, she's, But she's on the mend. I've been doing my best to take care of her. And so, uh, yeah, we have a new video coming out this week that is about lead cane. So uh, I hope to have it done, probably be done Wednesday, Thursday. Members will get it first. They'll get it um, in the morning, and then later on the, that evening we'll put it out public. Right. So, um, and it, it's going to be a good video. It actually starts right at the very beginning, the pattern, placing your lead. And for those of you that are just beginning lead, um, right. You're going to like that. Yeah, Texas if, Tom. Oh, hey, Texas Tom. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. We appreciate we that. We appreciate that so much. Woo, thank you. So if you're just starting <laughs> lead, this video is going to help because it's really going to, it's going to give you five things that you really need to know when you're starting lead. And it's those things that you go to class and you think about it. But then, and you, then forget you forget them about it when you leave. Right? But there are five things that you really, really need to just keep right in the top. And of your those head five things, should, yeah, they like Barb said, they should be on the top of your list every time you start a panel. Those are the five things that you need to remember to start to begin yeah. that so to begin that panel. It'll only be a short, maybe 10, 12 minute video, but I think so there'll take be a lot of ten or twelve energy. minutes out of your life. Watch the video <laughs> for us. Don't forget, give us a thumbs up. If it's helping you, and generate some questions for us on Monday nights through our videos if you can. So, any way that we can help you, or if you're stumped somehow or another just from watching a video, you really uh, should bring your questions to us here on Monday night. And, uh, and we can talk about it and kind of ease your mind, hopefully, on uh, what's going on. Okay, do we still have a bad connection? Sound is fine. Sound good? How we. Uh, someone said they're breaking up. Uh, yes, breaking up. Cat St. Jane. Uh, it might just be me. <laughs> Audio comes and then drops out. Let's see what's happening here. Okay. Well, I don't know. We need all new equipment. <laughs> That's what it is. Let me check. What we mark. need are two studios. We need an editing studio okay. and we need it where we work studio. So, but anyway, it's all good. Hopefully everything's going to be just fine. I can, uh, okay. let's try that. It's perfect sound. Magali, thank you. Sounds good. Everything's good. Okay, so I lifted the microphone up, got it off the table. Okay, it's closer to Barb. So, And Barb does have a little growly voice because she is still kind of under the weather with the sinus thing. Let me tell you, she's very lucky she doesn't have a bad sinus infection. So. Mucinex. One word, mucinex. That little green <laughs> Only monster. Only thing that helped me sleep. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, uh, one night I did not sleep at all with this cold. So yeah, I think was... it's allergy because he didn't get sick. And uh, Taylor didn't get sick. Okay, we have our first question. Okay, let's from go, Patricia. Barb. Thank you, Patricia. Patricia says she's working on a lead window. 
having trouble inserting the restrip in the lead channel across the panel. It keeps popping out between the pieces of glass. Any suggestions? Well, the thing about the restrip is that, uh, especially if you're using a small lead, you're going to find it's going to be really hard to keep it in there. And uh, so is it is it such a design in the window that you can't use a reinforcing bar? Uh, the restrip works really well, but it, it doesn't, it still doesn't take the place of reinforcing bar. So, uh, and it, typically the reinforcing or uh, the, the lead, the reinforcing strip is used on quarter inch lead or wider. If you're trying to get it in a 532nd, mm. Uh, okay. something really narrow profile, you're going to have trouble with it popping out because it comes in a roll already and there's no way to straighten it so that it can conform to what you're trying to use it for. So you might want to try, um, yeah, I, you know, I, I try to use restrip on copper foil and on quarter inch or wider lead when a reinforcing rod is absolutely out of the question. Otherwise, rebar is in. Yeah, so it's, it's really unusual. hard to do. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's hard not to do. Unusual, have a problem like that. So yeah, it's going to want to pop out as you go around the corners, and uh, and two bending it. Okay, bending it just in the shape of how your lead is bending, it's not going to conform to that anyway. The glass that you're putting in on top of it is going to have to hold it there. But you're going to really need a, 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 a wide bit. profile. Yeah, yeah, you're going to have to fight with it. So, and I hate that, you know, I, I hate that. I hate Patricia. being in the middle of a project and finding out it's not, it's not yeah, going to work as, it's not as gonna, wanted. You know, yeah. But the restrip does work really well on copper foil because you're putting it down instead of in. Yeah. Yeah. So you're putting so it, it down in between two pieces. It must be a pretty big window if you're, if you're reinforcing With the much. restrip, yeah. So you, you want to try. And unless the restrip stays solid from one side to the other... It doesn't really do any good for anything anyway. It's just a concealed reinforcing, but it has to It has to be a continuous reinforcing, or it doesn't work. You know, the it can reinforce up the border, but it has to be a continuous piece of restrip all the way up that border, even though your pieces of glass are small. But that restrip. If you're trying to keep it from bending this way with the restrip on the outside border, then that piece of restrip, of course, Patricia, has to go the entire length of the window. Yes. Yeah, the pollen here is terrible. I see a lot of comments about the pollen. Okay, well, if you have any questions about restrip, or, about pollen. restrip. <laughs> or pollen, for that or matter, because I'll go get some. I, I washed all the pollen off my truck yesterday. We have plenty. We have got lots of pollen. You should have seen the pollen coming off of Artie when we washed him yesterday. Artie got a bath. Yeah, the yeah. pollen was crazy coming off of Artie yesterday. So if you have a question, put it in the chat with a cue. It's got a pretty good uh, glass chat coming yeah, out. We're cleaning out decent... our storage building and we're finding all kinds of crazy things. We're finding crazy things <laughs> that are obs either obsolete or we just haven't seen in quite a long time. Hi, Maureen. Maureen. New member. Okay. Hey, Ed. I just. I was funny. I was uh, saw a picture of you and your and your wife while you guys were here. They, uh, so, you know, a couple months ago when you guys were in town. Kind of. I just saw that picture today. It reminded me of that day that you were here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It can, it comes up every once in a while on our on our Google, right? Yeah. On or our, our Google, whatever cloud it is. on our cloud. I think it's our Amazon. Right. You're in our I cloud, don't know. Ed. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay, Patricia class. said a oh, question, Mimi. I sent you a question, I think, two possibly three weeks ago on Conway Glass site. I didn't know where else to send. Do you by any chance remember seeing it? What was the question, Mimi? What was the question? Can you ask it here? Yeah, I'll be could, happy to answer it. Yeah, Mimi, if you could ask it here, that would be great. And then we'll share it with everyone else. It was as regarding well. reinforcement. I get to understand. I've just never seen it done. Okay. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'll have to. I'll have to go. We'd have to go back. Send and me look. the question again if you don't want to ask it here. Sometimes, 
uh, I get the basic understanding of it. I've just never seen it done. Uh, okay, so were you asking me if we... We have a video that um, shows you how to video? apply a reinforcing bar to your window. Seems like I would have answered that, Mimi. Yeah, it sure does, Mimi. I don't know. We're going to have to get a, a special email address just for RDRV because right now it's mixed up with Conway Glass and I have a ton of emails coming in. And if I missed your email, Mimi, I apologize. What are the two... Uh, Carla... She's a member. Hey, Carla. What are the two different angles on the pencil style glass cutter for? Two different angles on the pencil style the glass. The two different angles on the pencil style glass cutter. Well, you have uh, different tips. Well, you have yeah, you have different, different tips. Glass. And uh, the typical tip is the is the TC10 or what's called or the number it's I think it's a number 43. The TC10 tip is use uh, is a universal tip for art glass, and then uh, and it's what that is is the it's the angle on the wheel that is in the glass cutter. And I have a, a my glass cutter has a 17 degree wheel on it, and that allows me to cut everything, whether it's art glass heavy glass, tabletop glass, any of those glasses I can cut with, uh, this is my personal glass cutter. And so the angle of the wheel dictates to you what you should be cutting with it. A really, um, a wheel that's really sharp and pointed and has less of an angle is on the uh, I'll put it right here on my shirt, is on the little handheld Fletcher ball cutter. Now that is a very, you look at that wheel and then look at the wheel that's on your on your glass cutter. Do I need to do it closer? Look at the wheel that's on your, I don't think that I can even get close enough to show the difference in the angle. I probably need to get that camera angle. closer, don't I? But we'll get this, we'll get this worked out. But yeah, the, the difference in the, in the heads is the angle of the wheel on the carbide wheel that's in the cutter head itself. So uh, there's a, a 17. I don't know the, the numbers just right off my head because it's not something that I um, that I focus on. But I, I do have my... my This wheel here is a, is a 43, and it's a 17-degree bevel. So. It's a TC10, right? No? Mm hmm I don't know if this is a TC-10 or not. I don't think it is. I don't think But that's is. normally what we get. But right? normally that's what we use is a TC-10. And that cutter, that cutter, the TC-10 is really a, a universal for everything 3 16 and under. So you can cut picture frame glass with it. All of those things you can cut with it. You, if, if you're not in the industry of cutting tabletops and things like that, then you don't need to worry about a cutter that'll do all of those things. You, what you need is a cutter that does what you, what you do and that, so that it helps you do it well. And uh, so that's, that's, a big, that's a big part of cutting glass is your tools so that you don't get frustrated. Yes. Use the correct tools. That's right. Please. Yes. Good uh, gosh. Patricia said uh, she did get the restrip all the way across the window. She will try to talk her daughter-in-law into letting her put rebar across the Just window. Just one or two. That's all. And you know, Patricia, <coughs> if you turn, if that's on the vertical and you're the eighth, eighth inch rebar and it comes in quarter inch wide, is so minute compared to what could happen to the window that you just put all that work into... And it could it could fold up. It could do a couple of different things, and all because of a couple of little bars. I I would think I would talk your daughter in law, basically as your professional opinion, that it right. needs a piece of rebar, or two even. Cat St. Jane said she just repaired a twenty four by thirty six that had one quarter inch solid steel rods. One on quarter it. inch diameter. Solid steel rod. Sure, and then they would have been 
with 24 a by 36 window. Well, that's fine. Okay. It probably it went in a overdue. door. Oh, yeah. yeah maybe it, it pro- was a door. At one time, it may have went into a door. But here's the thing. Those rebars keep the wind from blowing those windows and folding them up. And, you know, if you quarter-inch steel bar was very common along with the copper wires that were attached to the solder joints and then the steel bars were inserted into the sashes and then the copper wires were wrapped around the steel to keep the window not only vertically elevated but to keep it horizontally level across the sight line. So think about that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, when windows are collapsing like that, you can go in and drill holes in the lead on either side and put those bars in behind it and pull those windows in a little bit at a time. You know, That's so right. We've done that before. That's right. Windows that were beat out by awnings uh, during Hurricane Hugo, we had to do that. Yeah. Oh, God. Just to get them intact so that we could get something in front of them without them collapsing on us. So, anyway, story stories. So if you have a question, put it in the chat. Looks like we have a lot of... A lot of people here tonight, so if you have a question, we're happy to answer it. Yeah, please give us a uh, you know give us an opportunity to answer the questions that you are having. Maybe something you're having trouble with, uh, cutting glass, or um, you want Ed to do a certain kind of cut, or yeah, explain if, a certain cut, or explain yeah. to you something. Uh, maybe you have a question about a piece you're working on. Um, just any kind of question. Yeah. So if you're yeah. having problems with a uh, cutting a certain cut uh on in your glass you know let me know if it's something that i think that we can do in front of here in front of everybody we'll try it and i mean you know things don't always work out for me either uh, i get frustrated a little bit but here in the studio as as one day in the near future barbara's going to show you when i come in here in the morning i her and i don't just have one project that we're working on we're like really, really multitasking. We and we have a lot going on. Today I slumped, uh, you know, the the, pan, the bent panel lamp that I showed y'all that I have six panels to do. Today I slumped number three and four. You should have cut, you could have showed that tonight. Well, they're in the kiln still at 540 degrees. Oh, I meant the ones you pulled oh, the out ones today. On the, yeah, so anyway, I'll show you those next week because I'll have them all done. And then I started uh, making these little crazy things with... Uh, uh, another mold that I found, I started making these little wings for this project that I got in my mind. So, <laughs> yeah, you have to talk to Pauline about that. Yeah, I want to talk to Pauline about to that. that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, question from Shaz Ray Would you recommend the grinder for a beginner? I know it's costly, but will it pay off in the long run as opposed to getting a mini grinder? In the long run, Shaz Ray, absolutely, the grinder is the way to go. Simply because, here's the thing. Now, some of the grinders that Barb and I have in our studio here, some of the grinders we have in the studio that we've been using right on, right on, are 20 years old. And I don't see spending the money on the grinder as a bad investment. Simply because of the way the bits change out, you don't have the heartaches of previous grinder manufacturers with your set screws and all that stuff. A lot of those things have all been eliminated with the grinder. Shaz Ray, I'm going to give you a thumbs up. Go to our website before you order that. Check it out on our shopping page, on our uh, Amazon, Amazon page. page yeah. Check that out. Because I and think it's, it might be on sale, Shaz Ray. I think Check it, it first because I think it they might did be. have a sale. Yeah. And you know, that, that's a great way to help support the RDRV channel. Out of that, that grinder, and we know that it's very costly, We they give us a commission of about 43 cents. <laughs> but you know what? That 43 cents coming from you means a lot to us. Uh, Carla asks, I just ordered the Haco 601. 601. Is there anything I need to do before first using it? Read the directions. No. <laughs> no just, Watch our video. Watch we the... do a review and an unboxing of the Haco. I right. think we do. Do we do an unboxing and then it, and then we do a follow up as well? And I then believe. we solder with it and we do the touch and go method and we also run a bead and we help, we talk to you about the temperature control. 
Yeah, we do on the a, iron. Yeah, we do an unboxing video, and then the following video we do a soldering video, and we talk a little bit more about what we learned with the Heiko. So yeah, watch those two videos, and I definitely would say uh, watch those two videos and buy a Heiko because it's yeah. A good the Heiko iron. Hey, I had to uh, actually. I you know I ordered my Heiko from Sunshine Glass, and uh, you can. You can go to our Amazon page and order it right off of that. And believe it or not, that it ends up coming to you from Sunshine anyway, I think. But go to our page, and that's a great way to help support our channel. So uh, we're going to talk a lot about, uh, you know, a lot of people are buying new tools. And uh, my suggestion is, is if you can swing the grinder, I would go ahead and get it because it's the, it's the first grinder and the last grinder that you're ever, you'll ever buy. And I would buy a V grinder too because it has the, uh, not, it doesn't come with the G surface, the mini surface, but it does come with the shield and the LED light above the work surface. And you know what? If you watch the video that we did on V grinder, you're gonna see why we chose the grind V grinder too because we had to have all those gizmos on there. I loved it. And I love it still. I still use yeah, it. Yeah, it's a great little grinder. You won't regret it. You won't regret the purchase price. It's a little steep, but you know what? I, I don't see it coming down because of the size of the work surface. You know, it's big. It's big. You'll like it. Um, Cindy asks. Cindy says hello. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> Would you care to share again what you clean your finished glass pieces with after you have soldered them? but before you patina them. I believe it was baking soda and water. Well, you're right, Cindy, and thanks for tuning in tonight. And it's a good question because we all have to be reminded of what we clean our product with and what product we use. So, yes, once you're done soldering and all, you've got flux all over your window and everything, you're going to want to clean it with a baking soda and water mixture. It, it's not a paste. What you're doing is you're neutralizing the acid and the flux, and you're also cleaning the glass. So you want to make sure that you can, uh, you, you want to move that around. I usually use about a quarter of a cup of baking soda to maybe two cups of water. So it's really not a paste, but it does clean very well. And you'll notice that once that's all done, uh, then you can put your patina on and then you'll want to make sure you clean it thoroughly after you use your patina. So keep in mind, and I did this the other day, after I used did my patina, I cleaned it, uh, my piece with glass cleaner and paper towels. And then I went back and I, I wiped it with glass cleaner with the baking soda on it because the patina will also stain your glass just like the flux. Yeah, so it's, it's crazy, right? Got well, it. it'll turn that... Clean it. Yeah. Oh, patina, and white glass. Clean it again. Yeah. Yeah, clean so it. clean it. You can't clean it too much, can no, you, No, you can't clean it too I, much. I don't think no. you can. I really no. don't. You and then if it because it is copper foil, once you get all that done, then use some lemon pledge furniture polish, spray it on there and wax it. And make sure you polish that well as, as you know, make sure you polish it well. Yeah. That You're was always a good gonna question. have to those yeah. Okay. All right. Uh let's see. A newbie here. Hey. Uh welcome to the outfit to our community page. Uh, Dakota says, I enjoy your podcast. Can you suggest what I should be assessing when checking out used window frames for use as hanging panel projects? I am fortunate to have friends with old barns. Oh, that's great. Well, you know, the biggest, the biggest problem that we all run into when we have those old window sashes is rot. Normally the corners are rotten. But you know what? If uh, if they're not coming apart at the corners and the thing in the you know in the joints, uh, I think you could you know most of them you can always glue and clamp them back together. But I would make sure that you're looking forward to make sure that the rot, the dry rot, from it being wet over many many years is not there for those projects. Yeah, that's really the only thing that you have Just to look dry out rot. for, yeah. or you know make sure it's in good. Uh, stable condition and yeah. you're good to go uh when if you're stripping them or anything be careful about lead paint but other than that um yeah if they're in good condition. yeah if they're in good condition you definitely want to 
And if you have somebody that's going to give them to you. <laughs> Take them. Take them, yeah. Because you can always make them work with something. <coughs> for sure. Excuse me. Uh, Chess Ray is just getting her studio together. And uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. <clears throat> you got a drink, Barbara? You need Yeah, I have something. Okay. Um, Melissa says she's having a little difficulty cutting a long, thin plant stem with a curve. What's the best way to do this? A long stem. <coughs> like something like that? A long stem, like a plant stem with a curve. Yeah. Well, the curve, the, well. Do you want to show the, it? Well, you want it, yeah, but you're going to probably need two pair of grousing pliers. Don't use your running pliers as part of your two pair of grousing pliers. You're going to need something else to hold that on. But what you're finding out, always care. I know don't go anywhere without two pair of running or grousing pliers. So, so anyway, what you're going to find is that when you're pulling down and trying to break that, it's, it's running to its weakest point. So you can't pull it down and think it's going to just break all the way around. No. Watch some of the videos where I'm showing you out, showing everybody how to cut glass and you're gonna listen for that pop and it's gonna start the run. And then you need to chase it all the way around. Us? Can you show us? You wanna show us? Yeah, I can show it. Do you wanna show us? Show we'll show it when we get to the- When we get to the glass chat, we'll talk about when it. When we get to the demo, we'll do that for the demo tonight. One, okay. one of the demos, is that okay? Yeah, I just, I'm sorry y'all, I got my feet discombobulated. Oh there no, we go. oh no. What's happening? Are you okay. okay? Yeah, I'm good. Thank okay. you. Okay. Wow. Heavens to Mergen Troy. You're way back there, though. Okay. You all right? Yeah. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> I don't think he's good. What I'm do you good. think, guys? I'm good. He's not good. I'm good. I'm going to turn the air conditioner on. Here, let me go turn the air up, okay? Mm -hmm. I'll be right back. I'm going to go turn the air up. I think he's Hold hot. on. Yeah, it's hot as a firecracker in here. Talking. Yeah, so anyway, so when you guys come to us on Monday night and you have these questions, not only does it help us and it gets our brains working again and maybe something that we have even forgotten, but more than anything, it really helps our viewers because when our viewers listen to a topic that you're having a problem with, they may also be having that same problem but aren't asking about it. So let's talk about any problems that you're having and if I can't help you, somebody in this community has ran into that problem, and maybe they can help us out as well. So, you know. Is that better, the air conditioner? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Barbara. Okay. I'll, I'll All drink, right. too. But don't let the ice hit you in the face, because that's all there's in there, just ice. Did you get something? I did. Thank you, oh, Barbara. Okay. Thank you, dear. Thank you. All right. Yeah, so we got a uh, we've got a lot of people tuning in tonight, Barb. I know, Thank I you. noticed that. Thank you, guys. Okay, let me get back to the questions. Can you uh, demonstrate cutting opaque glass in small strips and separate without breaking? I'm not sure what that means. Well, yeah. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to split that in half, you see how big it is. Uh huh. If I wanted to split that in half, I guess that's what they're talking about. We can yeah. split that in half. Yeah, but what does that mean without breaking? Can you demonstrate cutting opaque glass in small strips and separate without breaking? <laughs> okay. Well, you got to break it if you're going to separate it. Okay. Um, um, but I can break it without my break without my running pliers. I can break it. I can break it with the end of a pencil if you want me to. I'm not sure. Texas Tom. Hey, man. He said he just managed to uh, sell tools uh, that were given to him to a new person just starting out and uh, made sure they had a brand new rheostat in it. Thank you, Tom. Congratulations. Thank you, Tom. Congratulations and congratulations for helping that person that just get person. started. That's yeah, awesome. because, you know, we all need somebody to push us a little forward. And give us a rheostat. And give us a rheostat <laughs> and explain it to us while we do it. Yeah. Tell us about the rheostat. Okay. 
So yes, we will we'll do a demonstrate a long thin strip with a curve, like a stem with a curve, and mm -hmm. we'll do long thin strip. Cut some long thin okay, strips. Okay, Mark, we're gonna do that. Okay, and we're not we'll there yet, right? We're not there yet. We're gonna we're do We're getting that. close we're though, getting... so don't go away. <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned for that. Yeah. Okay. Can you uh can you recommend this is from Michelle. Can you recommend cut resistant gloves or finger protectors, please? Um mm. well who who is this? Michelle Van. Hey Michelle. Yeah, um I, I know I, Sunshine has them. Yeah, Go to Sunshine. Sunshine Glass Works and do a uh yeah, do a search on their website because I, I I know they have. I'm a, them. I'm a thing. My my thing is 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 I don't use gloves, but when you're first starting to work with glass and everything, you find you have a lot more cuts than you really realize that you would have. But as you as you work with the glass longer and a longer period of time, those cuts disappear because you're more conscientious about what you're doing and what you're doing it with. So, yeah, just go ahead and um, they make cut resistant gloves for chefs or sous chefs, you know, using knives all the time. But that's not beneficial for you cutting glass because them being metal and this, your cutter being metal, you're probably going to have a lot of slippage going on and not being able to hold on to your cutter. But you could try it, you know, and if, if cutting your hands is, is a big thing, um, then, like I say, you probably do need something to uh, get you away from cutting your hands so badly. Yeah, you definitely should use uh, glass gloves, and and they sell them. Um, well, they do, and they you know they make these nice little gloves that are at the hardware store that are rubber uh, textured on one side, and they're cloth on the back. They're really good. We use them like around the shop. They're gardening gloves, right? <coughs> Aren't they? They are barbs. They're Excuse gardening me. gloves. They're Rubber on the one side and, and we, nylon on the back. We use them around the shop here handling glass. And, yeah. man, they seem to work. Glass. They work better than what they call the gauntlet gloves that they charge you $39 for that actually work that are uh, called glass gloves. I prefer to go to the hardware store for five ninety nine. dollars Yeah, so that's what we use. And we do use uh, uh, gloves that are manufactured just for the glass industry right. when we move the flat glass around. So... Uh, we, we use them, but to recommend... The glass one? gloves that that won't let you get Lawrence cut or something. Sells them. Yeah, C.R. Lawrence slash U.S. Aluminum. You can get C.R.L. Uh, they're at a Los, based out of Los Angeles. Uh, they have uh, glass clothing for the glass industry. So, I mean, they carry everything. Yeah, so... Uh, and I don't know that you even have to be. Um, uh, I think you can order from. I think C. you can order from C.R. Lawrence. They have yeah, all for kinds sure. of cool stuff there. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm going to go to the next question. Okay, Barb. How do you cut? Michelle also wants to know. How do you cut the top corner of hearts? The top corner of hearts. We have a video. We actually have a video, Michelle, on that'll show you how to cut a heart. Okay. It's the Hearts Box video. It's the Hearts Box video. It'll show you how to cut it. And, uh, yeah, because, see, those things are every... Since we have a video for it, we don't want to take the time to, to do it again because that video is really, really beneficial to your question. Cat St. Jane wants to know, do you turn your tip around so you are not using the same side of the tip all the time? I find with the Heiko, I use the same side all the time, and I think it's because of the rheostat being there. Never thought of it. I never thought of it like that, but you know what? Here's the thing. Your, um, the ceramic heater, that's, the ceramic element heater that's inside the tip there is round, so both sides of that tip heat up evenly. I find that I use one side of my iron more often than other as well, but it's because of the way I lay it down, the way I pick it up. I think if I were right-handed rather than left-handed, I would use the other side. I don't know. But I do, I have it situated in my hand where I feel the most comfortable. And it's funny now that you think about it uh, and mentioned it, that I probably use the same corner of my soldering iron as well. <laughs> I, 
I probably use the same corner of my soldering iron as well. I probably do. Um, someone wanted to know how can you sign your pieces? Well, they they make a, a tool engraver. It's a vibrating tool engraver, and it is on our Amazon page. And uh, because we've had this question before, and it's a it's a vibrating engraver that uh, we use to engrave your metal tools. It's a metal engraver, but it will work on glass, and it works really good on lead. I don't recommend signing your pieces on lead because you can just scrape that away and. Uh, so what you want to do is, um, and it's funny because my father would do this when he was working with us when he was still alive, that um, he, would, uh, he would take one piece of glass in the window, didn't know where it was, and it would be upside down intentionally. And that upside down piece of glass would be signed on the correct side. So the signature was always there, it was just reversed. Sue Steggs said that uh, she just bought a pair of small running pliers from us. How long a score can she run with those? Probably about 10 or 12 inches, or maybe 16. Um, just the, the new running pliers that you have, they're designed for doing small things, for doing uh, petite work because of the petite running pliers. But they are really, uh, you know, 16 inches is probably pretty good. And by the time you're, if you're trying to run out more than that, you're squeezing too hard and you're going to break the glass where the running pliers are. I always say, start the run, pick up the glass, and run it the rest of the way with your hand. Right. Uh, can you, Ed, Ed Foreman's, Forsman wants to know, can you explain how to use your thumb to start a run and the pressure that is needed? And that's kind of like what you were just talking about. Yeah, that's about. what I was just talking about. That's what so. you're talking about. <laughs> that's what I was talking about. Uh, I think we're going to have a good glass demo tonight. So why don't we just do that? Why don't we just, do you want to do a glass chat and then a glass demo? And then we'll go over all these and we can kind of talk about all these things we just talked about. I don't know, Barbara. I have a mess over here. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Let right. me see. I'm trying so let's to talk about while we got the camera and I can look at you and okay. you're not looking at my hands. Let's talk about something so simple and it just brought back a lot of memories for me. It's just a little story, but uh, some years ago, 30 some years ago when we were working out in Homewood Baptist Church, the uh, we had uh, 26 windows to do three and a half foot by seven foot, whatever. And they, there's three three rows of borders coming in from the outside, and then three rows of borders coming up from the bottom before the name plates went on and everything. And at that time, my father was still alive, and he was working with us. And um, he was like, man, these borders are driving me crazy. So I come in one morning, and he's just, he's just whacking those borders. I mean, thousands of pieces of glass, y'all, thousands. So I was like, well, what'd you figure out how to help you get the borders after we got it? Because we, we, and we do the same way. We strip out the glass, strip it out. 42 inch strips, whatever width we need, inch and a half, two inch, three, whatever. So he says, you know what? He said, he said, I, I owe you for a square. I said, what do you mean you owe me for a square? What happened? Well, I owe you for a square. He said, I, I took a 12 inch square and I cut it off to four inches. And there is no borders ever going to be any bigger than four inches that I designed <laughs> with you. So, and you see that little thing, that little right there says Pop. That was Pop's nickname. That was my dad's nickname, Pops. So, uh, take you can take a little twelve dollar oh, square. We're, we're not. We're <clears throat> we're froze up, huh? We're froze up. So I need to. Put, so we're going to keep talking. We're going to keep on talking. And we're going to go to the short cam. Now we're going to go to the screen. What is it? Technical.
Okay. Oh, well, our other camera's working now. Main cam's working now. Okay, it's here working. we go. It's working now. It's working. It's caught. I don't up. know what happened. She hadn't touched anything. I didn't do anything. Okay, so don't, anyway, don't we're talking about here. We're talking squares, <laughs> and it doesn't work. I think work we need new equipment. They keep saying no. We don't need new equipment. Then they blame me every time something goes wrong. Oh. I think I think we need new equipment. Oh. I'm not taking the blame anymore. Cow gone. <laughs> <laughs> So okay. anyway, my Finish story, story. my yes. story with that square was just when you need something, just take the saw and make it. It doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, it's a little eight, twelve dollars square. Twelve dollars now. They used to be three dollars, um, but it's a twelve dollars square. But you know what? You know how fast you can cut two inch borders out when you don't have to drag twelve inches around with you. Anyway, this was really nice, and Barbara showed it to me, and it just brought back so many fond memories so i wanted to share that with you and now it's going back in my studio because we're working on it doesn't it's not going to help me on all this rope design that i gotta do <laughs> and now uh, this is the other thing we this found. is the other thing that we found and, do you want me to do a close-up and you ray knows what it is ray knows what it is because and, ray, the rest and of a lot the rest of you d probably do too but i'm going to show you this and i'm just going to lift it up oh, you that's all right i'm okay. going to show it to you okay so yeah no it's not a sewing machine that sews your broken glass together because that's not how it works but i want to show you this this is called the score one glass cutter and basically it's an inland product and it, it is still available through inland on their website for about 79 dollars plus shipping it's very unique design allows you, uh, this, is, this is what we used to use when cutting small pieces of glass for lampshades. So I'm gonna just show you this. So it has a little lever here. You see that, you pick that up and this, this lifts the blade up, lifts the cutter up and you set it right there. Now that puts pressure on it, it's not holding it, this is your adjustment for how much pressure you want on the glass. And now we're just going to, we're going to turn the wheel here. And come off. I know it's so funny. This is a cr crazy, crazy glass cutter, but it does work, y'all. It does work. So then we'll, we would take that and just grind it and make it fit into the lamp piece. And if you could imagine doing, like, I don't know, the, I think the last one we did was a, the Tiffany's Peony. It was a 16-inch one. So what's that, uh, 1,700 pieces of glass, everybody? Something like that. Anyway, we did all those peonies and those flowers and leaves and everything all on that score one glass guy. And it does work really well. So just, uh, I'll just, we'll do a little bit on this, uh, this clear piece of glass. And you can hear it. You can hear that thing just grinding away, but there it is. I'm gonna get my other pair of growls and pliers and we're gonna go right there, right there, just like that. Boom. Okay. Boom. Boom. And it, and it does cut. It cuts glass really well. And what was surprised me about this piece of equipment, y'all, is it's been in the shipping container for six years. And with a little bit of, of uh, elbow grease and cleaning it up, I actually freed the wheel up in the cutter head, and I didn't have to change the cutter head. Hey, girl. Uh, Rick Day said you, a pop square, we should sell them. <laughs> Uh, Carla wants to know. Let me put the other. There's oh, Miss Mary, Miss everybody. Miss she's right here. here. Can There's you see her? her nose. Let me yeah. Move the mic out of the way. She's right here with us. 
Okay, so somebody wanted to know what do we do? Let's cut a small strip of glass, bar. Okay, let me. I have a question first before oh, okay, we do go a, ahead. another demo. Oh, we're uh, good. Carla wants to know she saves the little blobs of solder that fall off when the when tinning the edges. Can they be reused? If so, how? Well, they can, but what you can do is you can just go through and pick them up with this string off of off your solder reel, your pound solder, and you can just just heat them up and pick them up or the other thing is is just sweep them into a a little container and use them for eyes for your birds or something rick says that he uh it uh yeah eyes for birds that's what you save them for animal animal eyes animal eyes okay rick day said it seems like it would be hard to see the uh pattern in relation to the cutting head on the score one actually it's it's quite easy and, it, and it's for small pieces. You don't want to cut big pattern pieces. No, this, this is, is just for the little pieces that you have hundreds of little pieces. That's what you want to do. You see or you see that piece of 30. glass is two inches by by an inch and a half, and that's what it is. It's just for small pieces. So Yeah, it's and a it nice was, little gadget I'm for your sure toolbox. It, yeah, and I'm sure it was developed by somebody that had incredibly bad arthritis in their hands, yeah. but could turn, you know? And that, I mean, it's just a really a sweet piece of equipment. Okay. And we've had it for quite some time. Yeah. So. Okay, so let's do... Uh, we're going to do a We're gonna do a strip, and we're going to split that strip. And we're going to do a stem. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. you're going to show Rick how you do the... Was it Rick wanted to know how to do the score? How to use your thumbs to run? Well, yeah, you, but you have to... Um, Ed Forsman wanted to know that. Ed Forsman, I'm yeah. sorry. So, but when you're gonna, if you, when you're gonna do that, you have to start the run somewhere. Where are we at over here? You want to go down there? Yeah. Okay, there you go. So if we if we take the back of our ball cutter and we start our run. Unless you have something like this table, Ed, this table is too hard. If you're on carpet, you can take and use your thumb to run the glass. But if you're on something that's so firm that doesn't give when you push down on it, it's not going to work. But I like to use my index knuckle and my thumb and pull down and away. I think that's what he was Maybe to. that's what you're talking about. I think that's what he's talking about. But Ed, about. I use, use that knuckle right there. And if you gotta break a bunch of pieces of glass, put some duct tape around that index knuckle right there, just like that. Boom! And go on about your business, my friend, because it's a lot of fun learning how to cut glass. And it's definitely a lot of fun once you learn how to cut it the correct way. All right, so we want to do it. You want to do a flower stem that's curved. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, a flower stem that's curved and narrow. Yes. How's that look? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut the outside of my score. And I have a dog laying on my foot. It's actually quite comfortable. All right, so I'm not sure that you can see this. Michelle's the one that asked this question, right? I think. Yes. Anyway, I took my running pliers and I ran my run down to right there. Like I'm talking about, in order to run the glass, you put your grousing pliers behind the run, your index knuckle under the glass, pull down, Get behind it again, pull down and away, okay? Now, the part that you're having trouble with is this part right here. And unless you do follow that run, or what I call chase the run, it's not gonna work for you.
Now you got all of this right here that you don't need, so you know what Ed's gonna do with that? We're gonna get rid of it. That is just, in your way, gonna be a hindrance to your score. Okay, we don't, we don't need all that. Get out of here. All right, so now this is the side we cut first. We're gonna take our grouse and pliers. We're gonna put our index knuckle underneath and we're gonna start the run. Okay, my run has started and it's right here, right here. I'm gonna grab my index knuckle behind it. My grouser's in front, right behind the run as well. I'm gonna pull down and it, it's not gonna take that curve. There you go. Show it now, where they can see it. There you go. All right, so I can take this and I can cut it, curve it that way. That way I can make an S out of it. You know, so here's the thing. Even on opaque glass, you can follow that score and you can follow that run, all right? Just, like, just as in this piece of glass right here. Okay, this is a 83872. And you know what that means? That means there's a lot of colors stacked up in it. So I'm taking my, my run. Actually, I'm going to use two pair of grousing pliers. One right there. And one right there, because I'm not putting my running pliers and use them as grousing pliers because I didn't buy them to use them as grousing pliers. So here we go. Down and away, everybody. All right. Now, if I was looking for water, we wouldn't find any. <laughs> Y'all, I hope that helps you out in your cutting endeavors. And if, and if you can, if I can help you in a, any other way, doing any other thing, then the other thing that Barbara found out in the... Okay. That's yeah. all right. I'm just going to share it right here. Okay. The other thing that Barbara found out in the shipping container was, um, was my father's lead knife. And he very seldom cut lead with this, but he loved, he would mark it with this because it was very handy and it was quite easy to mark it. But he had a really nice pair of lead nippers. And those were the Lepinettes that I still have and that we still use and we still sell on our website. So, <clears throat> and they come from us. And it's a good way. It's a good way if you're needing another pair of some new hand tools or anything, give us a try. Go to our website at conwayglass.com and go to our shopping page. And see if there's anything there that you may need to add to your tool arsenal. Okay. Uh, I think that uh, Pam had a question about membership. Um, That's Barb's department, Pam. Yeah, Pam. <laughs> if you go to the RDRV page, and it may be in the description of this video, uh, it should take you to the RDRV YouTube page. And you'll see a button that says subscribe. You have to subscribe and then it'll say join. But it, you won't see a join button until you see a subscribe button. And uh, I think it's $4.99 to join. But I don't know. Uh, yeah, but you have to be a subscriber first. So that so. might be why you didn't see the button the first time you went there. Yeah, so once you subscribe, the join button just follows right behind it, right above it. So... That's good. And you know what? Uh, I have a, I, I don't always use my hands to break the glass either because I have, I've gotten cut as well. But you know what I've, what I've found out over the years is that it, it, what I like to do is, is I like to get into a groove and sometimes that groove means I'm using my hands and that, you know, when I'm, when I'm there, I'm there, you know, so uh, I just want to be there. Magali want, wanted to know, wouldn't you have had better leverage if you were to start with the inner cut on that flower stem? Not necessarily, Magali, but uh, you know what? You can, you can do it either way, I think. And, um, but the main thing is, is you're, you're getting rid of all the stuff you don't need around that cut, Magali. And, and the whole part about that is, is the more that you can, eliminate around it <clears throat> excuse me 
the more you can eliminate around it, the easier getting that score out is going to be. And it's much tougher, y'all, on, on opaque glasses than it is on cathedrals. And it's definitely a lot tougher than it is on window glass. But, you know, I, I, I do cut opaque glasses for y'all, too. I don't just cut the simple stuff to show you scores. So. Uh, someone asked about the X on the pliers. And that's just... These, these, are not, these are not my tool bench pliers. These are on the, here in the YouTube studio for using. But this X represents for students because they'll forget which side is up on them. That X was put on there probably 15 years ago with a silver paint pen. And it's still there. But what that does is it marks the flat jaw or the top of the grousing pliers. Thank you, Ray, for that link. I, I, thank you, Ray. I can't get to the links from here, but thank you, Ray. That's uh, that's where it'll be, Pam. Yeah, and Pam, thank you for uh, taking the opportunity to uh, maybe join our... Uh, we appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate that very much. Uh, so we got a lot going on Rick tonight. wanted to uh -huh. know, uh, is someone in the studio a surfer? Uh, years ago, you know, that... That's not my surfboard, but if I had a surfboard it's my now, friend, a friend of mine, yeah, a friend of ours painted that actually, but uh, that would have been a surfboard I would have been on when I was about twelve. Uh, yeah, because it's only it's only five foot eleven. The surfboard itself, so it's only going to handle somebody about one hundred and twenty eight pounds. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm too old for it, so and I won't I, be jumping. If, on if that I thing. jumped on that bad boy now, we would both sink to the bottom. Okay. Okay, so I think we're ready to go and these fine people Sorry we were a few to minutes do. late tonight, but we have a lot of questions. And y'all, please write down your questions if you think of anything tonight after we go off the air so that you can tell them to us next week. Yes. Please, you know. Uh, had it One more question. We have time for one more question. Okay. When will we be offering classes? We have a class coming up. This weekend. This it's weekend, a lead class. It's a lead we're going to get the lead out. And then next month we have a class. Um, make and take next make month? And no, take. May. I'm sorry. May is a beginner stained glass. No, June. Oh, it's June. Yeah. Okay. Uh, look on our website because all the information is there. <laughs> we have That's a make and sure. take coming up. We have a beginner's class coming up. And we have a leg class coming up. We'll have another leg class coming up later this summer and then the glass blowing classes start in the fall right so and let us know go to the website sign up for the newsletter yeah, and find and it, out all yeah good stuff. check that out and then if you if you do take if you do want to take a class with us and you happen to have a camper or an rv for the weekend you can park in our lot and we can set you up with 110 we can't give you 30 or 50 amps but we can get you enough power to run your air conditioner and uh you know, whatever else you need running. So thank you all, everybody, for tuning in tonight. Barbara and I are so happy to be here with you. And we appreciate you all. We love you all. And we'll see you next Monday. And look for that video coming out. It'll probably be out Thursday, Thursday morning for the members, Thursday afternoon for the rest of you. And we're getting started on the big windows for the project. So see you then. Bye-bye.